One thing we quickly notice when we're looking at the world's leading distance runners is how effortless they make the appearance of running fast look. Perhaps you've seen yourself running on video and you've compared it to that of the elite athletes and for some reason these athletes look as though they're doing what you're trying to do but doing it with so much more ease. That's one thing we notice with the athletes that I work with in technique reviews is that there's some practical cues that the best runners in the world leave us that we can actually implement on an individual basis to improve our running performance. Whether you've looked at athletes from history like Kenyan athlete Paul Turgat or Hisham al Garouj from Morocco or modern day champ Jakob Ingebrigtsen from Norway, you'll notice that there's certain things that they're doing on a regular basis which is transforming their ability to run at a faster pace. Today I wanna to talk about three different elements of these athletes' technique that we can learn from and apply to our own running performance to improve how fast we can run and for how long. Before we get to that though, one important thing to recognize in the world of distance running is that technique is an often forgotten element of performance. Unfortunately, we haven't learned from athletes like swimmers and cyclists, golfers and tennis players to develop an appreciation of how to use our energy more effectively to get a better result. Now, let's take a look at a number of elements that Turgat, Hisham al and Jakob Ingebrigtsen can teach us that we can apply to our own running. The first thing that we can see right here is posture. Now, there's quite a lot of advice around how posture should be, but universally, we see one thing in common with top athletes. Each athlete has a slight forward lean. Now, don't mistake what I'm saying here. I'm not saying forward from the top of the hips. If your upper body is hunched over and you're thinking that is running forward, that's not what I'm referring to. That form actually limits our ability to get some knee lift and inhibits our stride length. What we're talking about is an imaginary line from the bottom of our heel to the top of our head and seeing a very slight angle forward on each step. What's so important about this posture? Well, obviously, so much of running is simply momentum. It's like single leg hopping done continuously. So if you think about the momentum that you develop from being on a slight forward lean from the bottom of your heel to the top of your head, then when each foot hits the ground, your body's in a position to just carry that momentum through to the next step. One thing you'll often see with runners who are quite upright is that each step is almost as though they're putting the brakes on. A lot of these athletes run with quite a heavy heel strike and with an overly heavy heel strike, what we notice is the brake pads come out and that we have to re-establish the momentum as we're going through each stride. So what you could do if you're trying to improve the posture that you run on is get a little bit of a feel for the angle that I'm referring to when you're just standing around. Start with your hands next to your hips and your body just standing up normally, then coming up tall onto your toes and leaning forward all at once with your whole body in line. Then when the momentum gets to a point where you need to take a step forward, otherwise you're gonna fall, you simply go with that momentum. As you get a bit of a feel for this, you can develop the capacity to implement this into a slight jog next time you're down at the athletics track. And then the second thing that we wanna look at is stride length. Now, one of the most common questions you'll hear when it comes to the technicality of distance running is how long should my stride be? The problem with this question is it doesn't take into consideration a number of factors. Firstly, it doesn't look at the speed that we're running. It doesn't look at the height of the athlete. It doesn't look at the distance that the athlete is running. I think what's a more effective question is where should our foot land when it hits the ground? And there's a number of athletes that we can look at to get an example of where our foot should land. If we're overstriding, often we're gonna see a really heavy heel strike, which is almost like the brake pads, which I mentioned earlier. We wanna see what athletes like Jakob Ingebrigtsen are doing. We wanna see a foot landing pretty much under a slightly bent knee. You can see with a combination of the forward lean that he carries that momentum through each stride with and the foot landing in angle which shows him ready to propel 
straight into the next step. It's the ultimate combination. It's almost a little weapon to be able to develop that momentum and that pace, which we see these athletes carrying all through the distances of 800 meters through to the marathon. The truth is there's a whole range of factors that various athletes are going to need to improve. And while we can learn from the elite athletes of the world, when it comes to our own running technique, professional guidance is often the best step to see some improvement. So if you're an athlete who is looking for a technique review, we can do that for you over at relaxrunning.com. Or if you'd be happy for us to feature you here on the Relax Running channel, I can do a technique review for free as long as you're happy to have your pretty face up on our YouTube channel. If you've got anything to say about that or any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I hope that was helpful. Good luck with your running and we'll see you all here again really soon.